Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studios in ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, we shall meet a strong and courageous mother, wife, and woman warrior for Keakua. Her name is Ivalani Lebron McBriar. So welcome, Ivalani. Welcome, Wendy, and welcome, everybody. Glad to be here. Glad yeah, we're excited. Here. I'm excited to share your story and your journey yes. with everyone because you got yes. a great message. Thank All you. Alrighty. <laughs> so let's get started. But before we do, I want you to just share with us a little bit about your beautiful blended ohana. Okay, well, um, that picture you see with me and my family, uh, my husband and I, we've been married 22 years. Timmy, we live out and uh, we reside in Calpeo Homestead. We have raised together um, eight children, four boys and four girls. Um, biologically, five are my children. Three of them are not, um, but those are my girls. So the oldest is Portia. Second oldest is Nadine. And my husband, we are both single parents. He had his one daughter and I had my two boys. And um, we ended up um, hanaiing both of the girls when they were like in middle school. So that's a beautiful blended family. Wow. Um, they gave us 16 grandchildren yes. and uh, you know they're everything to us everything i do everything i advocate is for them and not just my kids now um, my mo'opunas you know um the advocacy work the neighborhood security watch it's all about them in that picture wow. my family that we have gone through so much together, you know, the challenges that we face, that Native Hawaiian community face, incarceration, recovery, addiction, domestic, um, you know, just the challenges itself, but our faith, you know, our hope and the courage to just face those challenging time and lots of aloha, you know, allowed us to be a family that stands together, you know, and um, we have this saying, you know, um, family is forever, family is love, and no one gets left behind. Wow, amazing. And I, I mean, that's the testimony right there to get all of you in one picture. Yes, you we're know? missing one son. Um, yeah, but my one still. son was in active duty, but you know, oh, that was amazing was, to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I actually counted all the heads and the bodies and the family. I'm like, <laughs> oh, how did you do this, girl? So that's that's the story I want you to share, how you build a family, how you build a community. So um I'm just amazed. And every time I talk to you, I get more amazed of all your, your accomplishments and all that Keokua has you doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I know that you're a woman of faith. I know you're a woman of many, many talents, but please share with us one of your passions and what you did for the cheerleading squads. Um, in 1999, I started, um, that was the beginning of Diva Cheer. Um, and Radford cheerleading coach Bo um, Frank came up to me and said, you know, we need cheer uniforms and Hawaii was one of those states that it, there were no manufacturing for cheerleading so everything was um, the catalog and if you don't order early in May mm. the cheerleaders would not have their uniform in time for August and sometimes they wouldn't even make it for competition so wow. um, my daughter went to Radford um, and I ended up um, making the those two cheer uniforms you see out there I designed it along with Coach Bowl and um you know, it was a new venture coming out of medical as a critical care coordinator, getting into my passion, which is fashion and design. And um, Radford just put me out there because they were the top um, national champions. And from there, I didn't need advertisement. They, uh, Coach Bo Frank was really allowed me to, um, you know, continue my business doing all-star and uh, all the schools, both um, Outer Island and in Oahu. Wow. You know, with your healthcare background and now you have fashion and merchandising and, you know, I know you work with many young students and I know you see many different body types. So I want to just ask you, if you saw someone that wasn't as fit as you would want them to be or that they should be, how would you discuss with them about taking their health back? You know, I, I just tell them taking their health back is a, is a choice right? It's a choice that we want to be better. And um, that's something that we, we take within ourselves, and then we take the steps to do it. And not just taking the actions to eat better and die, but it's really just feeling good about yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, dressing appropriately, like 
for me in fashion, certain styles will make you look good and not good. So I was able to just, you know, um, recommending um, custom outfits that would not just complement one cheerleader, but the squad itself. Wow. So that was one of my niches. Wow, what a blessing to have you local as well so that yes. you can make our young students both I, i'm sure there's boys and girls boys and I, girls uh, yes yes boys and girls i'm sure that yes. having you local is so key because you can personalize and customize instead of having them one of 50 other states with all the many schools that yes, other companies yes. deal with so thank you for knowing your passion and directing it for the students because they so needed it and giving them the confidence to perform better and yes. taking their health back as well yes um, so you are blessed with with a home on a Hawaiian homestead. And I'm learning so much from you about this community, but I understand that you've encountered some issues with your personal home as well. So I want you to start with that, please share. You know, I, first of all, I love my Hawaiian homes. I love being in the community, but we did encounter some um, construction work. Uh, we brought our house in January of 07 and immediately um, we encountered um, cracks in the foundation, um, you know, elevation wasn't right for the landscaping. So it caused injury, um, electrical and plumbing, uh, plumbing, you know, water leakage and that. And um, I would think that the Department of Hawaiian Homes would help us. And as you can see in the article, it's been 15 years since I'm living there and none of the problems that I brought forth with 25 different um, DHHL officials has come to, um, you know, remedy the situation. And so I was happy that um, Rob Perez, um, as well as um, Rick Daysaw were able to go ahead and make a report on my shoddy construction work, which now brought light to the department to go ahead and, uh, you know, relocate me or, you know, address the situations with my home. Wow, wow. I mean, yeah, you wait for a while to get one of these and then you get one and it's a little shanty. And then you try to bring it to the attention of, to get it remedied and they push you away. So again, it takes a woman warrior and the team around her, you, to mm -hmm. get the job done and to fix things and make it better for not just you, but I'm sure there's other homes. Yes, in that definitely community. other homes, yes, yes. 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 Wow. And Keokua really picked the right person um, with the, the voice. <laughs> I'm not going to say the big mouth. I'm going to just say the voice, <laughs> right? To bring, yeah. uh, to get attention. So mm -hmm. you were very blessed because Rob Perez, um, you got his attention and mm -hmm. he wanted to help. So good of you and good that he heard your story and that he jumped mm -hmm. in to help you. Yes. Oh, yes. Wow, what a blessing. So many blessings come of just um, being obedient, I would say. Like, I know your story, so I know the obedience within you. And so fighting and, and going for the cause, it makes so much of a difference to, that you are versed and you're not afraid to, to share what you need to do and get what needs to be done. Oh, yes, yes. Wow. Um, you know, you have to advocate and, you know, with the help of Rob Perez, we were able um, to share our story on a national level. And that story started off with just me and then it ended up um, looking into all the homesteads programs, specifically in Kapolei. And um, the ending of July, that um, article, Promised Land, won two national awards. <laughs> Wow. Um, investigative journalism with ProPublica and Star Advertisers. So, you know, the Lord has really watched over me and guided me um, to the right people at the right place. And, you know, a home is a home is, you know, your your foundation. And so it was really important for me to do everything in my means to ensure that, you know, we not lose our Hawaiian homes. Right. You know? So, right. you know, uh, we are very grateful for um star advertiser as well as ProPublica that were able to be my voice and my family and the community's voice of the beneficiaries of the Hawaiian homes land. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I know many families, you know, yourself as well, I'm sure have waited a while to get this, you acquire it and then you have some issues and then you get roadblocks. But you know, Keakua gives you only what he knows you can handle. He's raised you up, he's groomed you 
so that you can be the voice and the voice you are. And I'm just so proud that um, you're using your voice and your experience and your abilities to not just yes. help your family, your ohana, but the rest of the community in your community, as well as I'm sure other homestead communities throughout the state. So mm -hmm. congratulations to you, Ivalani, for being that voice. Thank and you. um, you've traveled far to voice your uh, concerns. Mm -hmm. yes. You're not just from Honolulu to the capital or Honolulu Hale, but where did you go thus far sharing your, your passion and your, your knowledge of all this that you've learned? Um, one of my favorite places that I usually travel four times a year um, is uh, DC. So as you can see, that picture was a bunch of us homesteaders. Um, I was invited by um, Shaw Chair Robin Danner and also my Kaupea president, Michelle Kohane, two dynamic women in the Native Hawaiian community that invited a bunch of leaders um, for the first annual Homestead Summit leaders that we interacted and engaged with um, different of the federal agencies. Department of Justice was one of them, Department of Interior, um, the FCC, um, the Bureau of Land Management, um, Department of Education. So. I was really blessed to be able to see like uh, how other native tribes leaders are able to engage with government to government um, relationships with leaders. So I'm um, very blessed. You know, I've been to New York, I've been to California, I've been to Montana. Um, and it really gives me the opportunity to um, learn from them because there's 585 native tribes in the United States we being the youngest of them. So I look at us as the babies that we're able to learn from them and, you know, to help our people, our Lahui. Oh, wow. How exciting, Ivalani. I'm so uh, amazed of what, and I know it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there are more travel plans coming up. I know you're hitting the road again soon. Where are you off to? Um, I'm going to be actually off to DC again. Uh -huh. um, I leave on October 16th to the 22nd. Uh, we will be doing some with enterprises, some of the other funders for us, but we'll all, we always make a, a trip to go to the Department of Justice, DOI, and definitely our Congressman Brian Schatz is another one that I'll be seeing when we travel up there next month. Wow. Wow. So I know that you've dedicated so many hours to your homestead community. Mm -hmm. um, and actually this program should be called the health of a community because that's exactly what you're building and encouraging and just promoting the a healthy community is a yes. community that is going to be strong and mm -hmm. foundations are what we're all needing to build stronger mm -hmm. for our ohana to yes. sustain whatever is out there and whatever is yet to come if the community is strong the ohana will be strong and yes. so that's what you're building and so um that with all your homestead community uh, activity, what have you been accomplishing thus far? Um, we have actually um, accomplished, um, we brought a sixplex in Kauai as a fee simple. Um, you know, it's hard, as you can see today, um, the department is not building enough homes. So what my job is that what we do in our leadership, we're trying to create, um, jobs as well as affordable housing and the six pack was one of those um in anahola there is a nine acre we have a kumu camp that what that helps us to raise money so that we can do the leadership we have um we do policy um you know housing policy is is what i do on the residential and uh, homesteading and so these are the works that you know, I dedicate to, cause I know that's where Keokua has called me, you mm -hmm. know, um, and we're not just any other community. We're a community of native Hawaiians with government to government um, relationships um, that will allow us to hopefully be self-sufficient and thrive on our lands, you know? And right. I wanna ensure that for our people. And as you can see, it's not happening, but you know, we well, are, we are, we are looking for solutions and I'm not bringing up the problems, but addressing the problems with solutions and right. the people, the beneficiaries, we are the solutions. Right. You know, and I see in that, that, that last photo, there's a whole panel of you that, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not, I mean, I know you we're, we're having you on the show, so we're giving you a lot of the shout out, but I know that there's a team around you 
that work uh, tirelessly with you. And I know that there always needs to be a, a head heart or head passion. And so that's why I'm speaking with you because I know that you're a big driving force to get this job done along with the people um, by your side, your, your advocates that work along yes. with you. So yes. congratulations to them as well. But again, uh, congratulations to you for being uh, the head, one of the heads to take this project on and building your, your community. That's so, so critical. And yes. the other thing that I admire about you is um, you're mentoring the next generation. And this is so critical. I know that you've given your ohana a voice as well. It's not just you or your committee and the people around you, but you're also raising up your ohana. So share with us about the voice that you've given to your ohana. You know, um, when we were addressing the problems with our home without any beneficial consultation um, with the department, they put us into contested hearing, forced us into foreclosure. Um, we weren't allowed to, you know, address some of the construction defect. And I thought it was really important you know, the Lord put it on me that my children are the next generation. And so I said, we need to um, get to the legislative. We went to the Hawaiian Affairs Committee in the, re uh, this is for the confirmation of um, William Isla to be chair. And we got to speak there. And that's where Hawaii News now um, picked us up. But that was the day that my children knew that what was their kuleana as the successors of our Hawaiian homes. Um, and, you know, they realized at a, at a young age, um, the instability of losing their home. So we were as a family saying, you know, um, we're going to learn the laws. We're going to learn our rights. We're going to learn the act. We're going to learn policy and housing. We're going to learn policy and contested case hearings in chapter 91. And that was actually what I did with my children. And, um, you know, that's that's what we have to. The legacy is for a thousand generations. We have to teach them now, right? And you know that you were mentoring with them. Uh, they were right there, seeing you speak. Um, did they have a chance to voice their opinion as well, or were they just there to observe? Um, they were there to observe, but after that, um, the reporter were actually talking to my children, so they could get you know not just me, but see how it affects them. You know. Um, you know, we're so blessed as Hawaiians, you know, we're so grateful. So even with all the discrepancy with the home, you know, um, we are always taught to never curse your home. You know, it's a blessing. So sometimes we just continue to live with the conditions that really our trust tells us that, no, this is not the kind of conditions that we should be living in. And, you know, we have to stand as a family um, and let them know that this is not uh, healthy. You know, this is and not say, and so right. this is, you know, a, a wellness thing overall for us as a family. And I'm glad that when I took them, they got to experience that. And I know that would impact them for the rest of their lives. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, um, like I was born and raised on the West side and, um, and back then, I mean, we're talking what 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we never had the opportunity to hold a microphone. Mm -hmm. I think the first time I held a microphone, I was like 19 or 20 years old back in the day because we didn't have the experiences that these uh, students have these days yeah. oh, yes. so I mean that microphone is very intimidating if you I mean yes. especially a yes. kid from the west side I mean like whoa what is that <laughs> yeah. right? movie stars yes. get microphone right mm -hmm. but yeah so exposing them to just the whole system and speaking when when your voices are heard so critical so yes. critical. That's why every time I see one cakey, I want to just give them a microphone because, yeah, they're going to be scared in the beginning, but you know what? They warm up and they get confident. And that's what you want to build in yeah. these cakey yes. is confidence. The next leaders for tomorrow. Yes. yes. I'm so excited. I mean, not just the whole community, the family, everyone's raising up because you had an issue that needed to be resolved. And yes. if you had a perfect, perfect home, you would not have a perfect home because nothing would have come of it except. Yes. You know, but you have to fight and fighting is good um, mm -hmm. for the right cause. And that's oh, yes. exactly what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, God gave you a little mess and you're changing it into your message and the message mm -hmm. for your whole family. Yes. So this, I mean, this talk truly should be entitled the health of a community because yeah. community is so important. And important. I know that for you, you get your community involved and uh, you've been doing mighty things in that community, your homestead community. 
Can you share a little bit with us what's going yes. on? Yes, um, I'm a very advocate of health and safety in our community. So the Neighborhood Security Watch is something that I'm very passionate about. You know, I, I call us the first responders of the community. Yes. You know, we're walking around, we know the family, um, we know the statistics of our community, um, you know, uh, the crimes, the drugs, the gaming, you know, who's, you know, who needs um, resources, who needs financial help. And, you know, as a neighborhood security watch, we built that relationship with our communities and the war on crime on drugs, you know, the shortage with HPD, we see, you know, we read the statistics and it tells us a story. And so what we did as a homestead community, we started in Coppola and took a stand, one street, one block, one community to just take us, you know, take a stomp out of drugs and crime. And not only were we doing it, that picture you see is us and Eva. So what we do now, we come not only as a homestead, but we support even outside neighborhood security watches like um, Eva, Makakilo, Ocean Point, um, Wainai, Miley. We have really taken that turn and, and it's our heart that the Keokua put on us is that uh, we love our community. And if you love your community, you have to love your family because that's where you put your family. That's right. where you go to sleep at night. That's where you're supposed to be safe. And I feel that a lot of us that came from the demographics of statistics that um, to, to us, it seems like a curse. We're reversing that curse. And yeah. we are being the answer. We're taking um, the recoveries, the drug addicts, domestic, and they are walking now, um, showing their change, their transformation life and what they can give back to the community. And it's just, as you can see, look how long it is. I mean, that's in Eva. And, you know, I feel like, you know, there's a community resilience that we can look at the problems that we face and come together and solve the problem. And the problem is that we can't do it alone. You know, the crimes, the drugs, it's it takes more than just the spouse and the family member. It takes a community, yeah. it takes a village. And this is the concept that I'm seeing across the island is that we all want a healthy and safe community. Wow, wow, so blessed. You're all so blessed and you're also so obedient to God that I know that you'll take every opportunity to share your Ohana's journey because you've got a journey and that's how I met you and that's more. when I first heard you at the Croc Center actually we heard from your handsome son Kinao, Kinao and uh, he won my attention mm -hmm. and then after I realized it I said I knew that I wanted to get to know you and possibly work with you because what did you uh what you did with your son your family you're, and then now I'm hearing all the, 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 the things, how you build community. So it's not just your home and your immediate family. You're building community as well as you're building Hawaii. And this is what Hawaii is all about. It's all about Ohana, right? Mm -hmm. and, yes, um, it is. Yeah. And so you're bringing that back, but one community at a time. And that's yes. how we have to do it. And like you said, the government has so many things that they need to look after. And what you're doing is you're all taking responsibility of your immediate family and uh, jurisdiction, your community. Yes. So if we all did that and we were responsibly taking care of ourselves, then other communities doing the same thing. And then, then government just worries about all the other infrastructure and the bigger issues of the day. So, yes. wow, when, uh, what, when I did meet you, I, I heard your story and I just want you to share a little bit about that special day at the Croc Center. You know, that was a special day because as you know, you know, uh, my family, we came from recovery. We know how that is, but my faith in God, my hope that, you know, my husband and my community of those that, you know, are addicted to whatever drugs it is, alcohol, that there is healing, you know, there is healing. And just because one of our family member chooses to do that, that doesn't mean that we will spiral down and in, into disappointment. Um, Kinau really shows that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child, but how much more is it to raise a child and a hurting man, you know, and, and for me and my husband being there on, 
uh, the Croc Center on August 6th really showed the testimony of the resilience of our family that no matter what, you know, um, resilience is, is the process and the outcome of how successfully we adapt, you know, to the difficult and um, life-changing challenges we have and still come up and I was faced with so much, but I was determined that my son will never be a statistic. We're not gonna be, uh, you know, we're not gonna be like every other Hawaiians and every homestead. And, you know, just to see him um, during the COVID, it really hit us because a lot of things was coming more against me and my family. You know, we have a home that's, you know, uh, not adequate, um, no school for two years. He's writing on, um, Financially, you know, we all got hit um, business wise and, you know, thinking of working out his future was, but he was determined every day he got up, he trained, he studied. Um, at the end of the result of his senior year, three days before graduation, um, he was cum laude, you know, state wrestling champion. Um, he was hurricane of the year and he won the construction and design. And, you know, I was so proud because I knew that everything I sacrificed for, for my son, he's the youngest, you know, he's number seven, that it was worth it. And oh, that yeah. I knew that God said, can, when yeah. we have faith, can, when yeah. you hold the actions we put in, can, yeah. and yeah. loving them no matter what the situation it is. And resiliency is the outcome of faith, hope, and aloha, you know, yeah. and um, I, I, he keeps me strong, you know, Kinao keeps me strong, you know, <laughs> all of my children, they wow. I have that Marvel, relationship. I mean, the all strength, the obedience is all together there. And so I'm so blessed that we got to really have some time to talk story and get to know her. Um, but I know that you are a woman out to get results. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just ask you, how do you go about doing that in the community? You know, you find the people that have the same heart as you. And even if they don't have the same heart, you find the things that you know, you speak to their heart because sometimes it's miscommunication, misinformation, misunderstanding. And um, as you go about and share your vision, your goals, which is you want good things for your family. Everybody wants that. And by just sharing your heart, I'm able to have people that want the same because we can't do it alone. So I'm able to... Um, you know, um, grab the community. So, um, you know, wow. we are, we are I making know that you rounded up. Um, I mean, I just want to give a quick shout out because we're running out of time. <laughs> quick shout out to your representatives out in that district, but of course to HPD who yes. has partnered with you all and lo learning your heart and just being with you um, and having some similar issues in some of their families. Um, I know that great results will come because you're partnering right with the right uh, departments out there to get the support and the help and bringing the solution to a, a problem that's been ever existent, but you're tackling it and you're making a big difference. So Ivalani, we've run out of time for today. I just yes. want to mahalo you, mahalo you, you, Hawaii's woman warrior. And um, thank you, Wendy. Know, thank you. It's a blessing. To I, I know that we're going to hear much more from you and more great stories, success stories. So I'm going to welcome yes. you back when you get back from your trip. But we'll sure. be seeing everyone in the next two weeks at Taking Your mm -hmm. Health Back. So mahalo, Ivalani. Keaku. Mahalo. Warrior. Aloha, yes. everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.